Hi friends, it's Kaylee Berg. Welcome back to my studio. You know I'm always super thrilled to have you. So today's tutorial is sort of an accidental video. Um, I was filming myself painting the lovely Shauna's veil here, her lovely sheer lace veil. And I was just gonna put it in just as a regular, you know, as I as I do, as I close my um, oil paintings. And this being the first time I ever did this sheer lace thing, I was kind of a little bit nervous, but I was like, um, dang, that kind of turned out really well. So people might be a little bit curious about how I did this. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Um, I don't mean to toot my own horn here, but I'm pretty freaking happy with that how this lace turned out so hopefully you guys learn a little something if you do please pop that subscribe button it really helps grow my channel and it makes sure that you come back over and over and over again and uh oh if you are curious about how i made not only of course the lace shine but her jewelry shine check below for links because i just did a tutorial on how specifically to paint gold jewelry so thank you guys for being here i appreciate you <laughs> So firstly, let's talk your paint mix. Now you're gonna to wanna to start with a bit of titanium white and the tiniest, tiniest, littlest smudge of gray. Did I mention tiny? Cause I meant teeny tiny, like not barely even a drop, super tiny. Just enough to sort of offset it because what you want is a white to shine through, but you wanna save a super bright, bright, bright white for your biggest highlights. So if you add a touch of gray, it's good. And now if you look at this, of course my uh, mineral spirits terpenoid is a little old so you know it has some color to it as well but this is not a problem trust me even though this looks toned down on my little palette it's gonna look super bright on my linen or canvas notice how I am not being shy with my terpenoid at all you pretty much want to turn your oil into a watercolor for this sheer veil, this is the only paint you will use. There will be no dark paint whatsoever. All it will be is lighter and lighter applications of this already super ultra thin white. Now to start out, this painting is completely dry. It's been dry for probably at least a week. Now what I found that was best to do when creating this sheer fabric was to definitely go with the flow and make the paint way thinner than you think. Even that stark line that looks like solid paint is still very, very, very diluted. Now, as you can see, I've got sort of a sharp edge liner brush, but it's also a nice thick brush. So I can get a nice edge for creases and folds but I can also wash in a lot of very loose paint I would definitely suggest doing less than you think at first and later on building up a little bit remember too if you need to you can always do a super light wash just to kind of get things in let that dry and then go back in a second time now I went ahead and opted just to sort of do the whole veil in one fell swoop not including the lace of course um, but don't be shy about doing multiple layers and letting them dry and building it up because I think that that could be a really good method, especially for beginners. Now, if you see this, I'm just kind of freehanding it. I have no drawing underneath. I just decided to sort of jump right in. I'm doing a combination of wiping away with a rag, using a blending brush, using a stark brush, using a few other ones. You'll see they'll come in and out. So I just kind of felt like I wanted to have all my tools there, whatever sort of needed to happen, needed to happen. This is one of those exercises in really paying attention to the material that you're trying to paint. You know, it's one thing to paint thick skin, you know, and I say thick because it's, it's solid. It's a real mass. You know how it is, especially someone who's been painting humans for a long time, you know, and then it's another thing to paint thick fabric that sits and folds and has weight and has mass and then it's a whole nother ball game to paint very thin light airy I mean this is not supposed to have heavy mass you shouldn't be able to visually feel this very much I want it to seem like it's almost like a cloud floating above the skin Now for something like this, you do need to be a little bit fearless. Although this is sped up by two, I am still working kind of quickly. I want my paint to stay 
nice and pliable while I'm working it. And look at how I am putting on and taking off, putting on and taking off. That's what's going to be the key to making a nice light gauze. You want it to be very blended. And also, you need to pay attention to the type of material. As with anything, the light is going to reflect off this a little bit differently than on a regular piece of fabric. Those edges where the gauze is sort of folded in on itself and you are seeing not only where the light hits but where the gauze is actually highly concentrated as it folds around a form are going to be brighter. So you're going to want to make those edges a little bit brighter. Whereas on a regular piece of fabric, the edges as they turn away may be darker and the actual highlight might be turned in. On gauze, it's going to be directly on the edge. The folds, the highlights, everything compounds along those edges. But then where it folds along the body, you're going to want it much softer, much lighter. And don't forget that we will be adding lace later. So even though this looks like stark white, it is not. This is still a slightly muted down white. It's just a little bit thicker or a little less thick. Because the paint application was so thin and the terpenoid dries so quickly, I only had to wait 24 hours to let my painting dry for the next step. Now as we are painting the lace details, we are back to using our oil paint more like an oil paint. But you still want to be very conscientious of the material that you are painting as well as the light and how it's hitting it. Now of course, I'm still not using a super duper stark white. This has been toned down with gray, as I'm sure you can tell. And this has a little bit more gray because it's behind her hand. It, I want it to be more in the background. Remember when I spoke earlier about having all your materials handy and using whatever seemed to make sense? Well, here's a fun method. Using a rag that doesn't have any wet paint on it, you can literally press and rub on top of a wet painting. Be careful with this method as you don't want to smear the painting. If you do a nice clean rub like this, what it can do is it can sort of take off the top layer and give it a nice sort of deep smudge into what the dry painting has going on underneath it. This is a nice way to sort of dull your edges just a little bit without actually using like a blending brush per se because for doing lace you don't necessarily want a blend but you do want to make sure that it looks like fabric. It's a fine line. Speaking of a fine line, it is time to pull out the actual liner brush. I love these. They're really great at gathering a fair amount of paint and really holding it in so you can get a nice, beautiful, smooth transition. Right here, this is an edge that I was doing. As you can see, I want it to be really sharp because I want it to sort of frame her face and to show that this is not part of the lace decor, although of course it does have lace on the edge. but. You know, I just want it to really, really pop, so I'm going to use some of my brightest whites in the highlight. For some of the shorter strokes in the lace detail, I'm actually using a number two or zero round. If you are curious about this or any of the other brushes I am showing in the video, check down below. I'll have a list of them as well as links. If you purchase through any of my links, it helps to support this channel. Thank you so much. Another bit of good advice I can give you, honestly, really and truly, is don't worry about being super perfect. If you look at some of my designs really close up, they can be a little janky here and there, but remember that number one, this is fabric, and number two, you are a painter and you are doing this by hand. Honestly, I know some people like to do hyper, hyper, hyper realism where it looks just like a photograph, and that's awesome to each his own, but I think it's great to have a little bit of a painterly feel. So just do as close as you can, but realize that with lace detail, there can be 10,000 little stitches in every single piece, especially doing um, or painting the machinery made lace these days. So do not try to think that you need to paint every single little snippet here and there. If you look at this closely with my reference photo, you will see that I am doing an artistic rendition of this lace. I am taking the concepts that the photo is giving me, I'm making them a little bit looser and lighter. I'm doing it 
plausibly and feasibly, something that's not going to make me crazy, something that I can enjoy, and I'm doing nice little designs. Very, very, very closely based, but not hyper, hyper, hyper realistic. And honestly, I think it turns out fantastic. And don't forget, you can go back in and highlight some folds if you need to, because the folds, as I said earlier, are highly concentrated gauze and they should be very shiny and bright. Basically, the look I'm going for when doing the lace detail is a material that is more solid than the gauze, but is still a part of it. You want it to be stronger and brighter, yet you don't want it to be so stark that it looks like it's drawn on or possibly hovering above. That's why if you notice, I'll do sort of a stark edge here and there, and then I will go back in with either a blending brush or the fabric or whatever I need to do just to kind of soften the edges a touch. Now, the thing is you don't want to actually blend blend because of course it is one material sewn onto another. Like I said earlier, it's a very fine line and it's gonna kind of take a little bit of getting used to, but just have all your materials around you because I have a feeling you're gonna pull for some interesting things. As with everything, go back and check your work to make sure that everything really pops and stands out the way you want to. I felt like I had a few corners, edges, and folds that could have used a little bit more highlight to really show the concentration of the gauze wrapping around the form itself. So I went back in and added a dash of white here and there. I think it really, really helped. As with everything I create, I'm constantly checking my work in the mirror. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to check out the video down below because I'll tell you all about how to improve your drawing for painting using nothing but a mirror. This painting has been such an awesome learning experience for me. I hope you've learned a lot too. Thank you so much to Shauna for giving me this fantastic image to work from. If you'd ever like personal help with your artwork, I am available via webcam for art and art business consulting. Make sure you hit that subscribe button guys and I'll see you next time.